Today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely double bed and I'm going to split the videos into three parts and in this first part I'll be showing you how to make the bed frame and the sponge mattress and then in the second part we'll dress the bed and in the third part I'll show you how to crochet this lovely bed runner or afghan using the traditional granny square and these um, crocheted cushions here. Okay so the bed measures 100 millimeters high by 120 millimeters wide by 170 millimeters deep and that's four inches high by four and three quarter inches wide by six and three quarter inches deep and that's a standard double bed size. Okay, so to make the bed, um, the wood I've used is called a besh, and it's a soft wood, very easy to work with, easy to cut um, just with a craft knife. It comes in sheet and strip form, both of which are used for making the bed. Other woods you could use are basswood or lime wood, gelatong, um, maybe something like spruce just something that's nice and easy to cut with a craft knife and then the craft knife I have is this Swan Morton it takes 10 A blades always put a new blade in at the start of a project um, and if the uh, blade begins to catch or drag along the wood that means that it's becoming blunt steel ruler obviously for measuring and for um, using along with the craft knife to cut the wood nice sharp pencil for accurate marking to cut the strip wood I use a mitre block and saw it's, because it's a 5mm it's too thick to cut by hand or you could use a handheld mitre to cut it a good wood glue I think you probably all know by now my favourite is this Gorilla Glue it bonds really quickly, dries natural uh, paint, just these little sample pots of normal household emulsion are fine, I've used a sort of antique white for this bed but obviously colour is your choice, you might want to varnish the bed for more traditional look, look nice um, two types of sandpaper I've used, a uh, 120 grade, which is a slightly heavier grade, and then I use a 500 um, for sort of fine sanding. And I like to use these small pieces, which are easier to get into all the nooks and crannies when you're doing like the final sand. I used a flathead screwdriver to create the grooves um, that you can see there in the head and footboard along with the um, steel wool. Masking tape's always handy for holding pieces together when they're drying. And this is an inch uh, low tack uh, masking tape. Okay, so in the cutting list that you just saw there, I've advised you to cut the headboards um, which which we do in two parts and the, and the footboard um, against the grain so as a general rule you'd cut the longest measurement in the same direction as the grain but in this case I would advise you to do the opposite to that because we're scoring these lines into the wood and you can't um, score lines against the grain so because they're shorter that way than going across I just advise you to cut um, the longest edge against the grain. I just wanted to explain why I've put that in the cutting list. We're going to begin by constructing um, the bed frame. So take your two long mattress supports and two of the short mattress supports and you just want to apply glue. And I've just got some here that I've dispensed onto a piece of cereal packet card. And I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it to each end of the short uh, mattress support and just stand those there and 
And then we just basically want to glue these two short supports between the two long ones. So begin by attaching that corner. And then this bottom corner. And then attach this long support to either end. And this is going to be quite flimsy until the glue begins to take. So just sort of gently manoeuvre it all together. And you want the edges of these long supports to be flush with the flat side of this short support. If they're not flush, then it will sort of throw the whole bed frame out once we attach the head and footboards. And a good sort of tip is to use the lines on your cutting mat just to make sure that everything's square. So line it all up inside of your frame and then before the glue's dry you can just square everything off if it's not square. And then once you're satisfied that everything's square and everything's flush, you could sort of press that together, just put my finger in the glue, press it together and just hold it for the glue to take. And then just really, really carefully put that to one side. I've done this before and the whole thing is just shattered. And just leave that now until the drip glue is completely dried. And I have one here that I made earlier. So now we've got a nice sort of solid frame that we can handle. And the next step is to attach the third short mattress support along this end. So apply glue to the short mattress support that's attached. Like that and then lay the frame down and just attach this shorter support exactly to that short support so it's not sort of overhanging these long supports. And press that together and then we can use clamps um, just to hold that while the glue is drying. I'll just put one at either end in the middle and again just be really careful when you move that now because it's going to be sort of top heavy and that can also be put to one side until it's completely dry so whilst the bed frame is drying we're going to prepare the head and footboards so we want to do this on all four pieces and we're going to start by scoring grooves into each piece down the shortest side which runs with the grain and we're going to do them 11 millimetres apart. So if you begin by making pencil marks at the top and bottom of each piece, so 11, 22, 33 and 44. And if you're working in inches, I think it's 13 sixteenths. Um, but just double check that before you start. Just want to do about four even grooves. So mark at the top and bottom of the piece and then just put your ruler across so it's just sitting below those pencil marks which allows for the thickness um, of the screwdriver and we're going to use a flat head screwdriver in just the very sort of corner of the, of the flat end. So hold the ruler steady and just start by doing quite a light score and then you can just go in two more times, two or three more times 
a little bit heavier. And that just creates a nice groove in the wood. If you just do that light score to start with, it helps keep the screwdriver on track, otherwise you'll sort of make marks all across the wood. And then when you've sort of got halfway, turn it round, otherwise your ruler will tip off the end. And do the other two. And then just take a small piece of um, sandpaper, and I have this little pot with tiny pieces in because they do come in handy when you're sanding as well. And just fold that in half and then just work that along each groove and that will just smooth the edges and just make a more pronounced groove. So I want to do that on all four pieces, and I've done these already. And then we're going to join them together. Um, before we do that, we're just going to make a, a slight bevel along one short edge, and then that's the edge that we'll join. Um, so just go along the sandpaper and just bring it into an upright position as you sweep it towards you. You want to do that a couple of times and then that just very gently rounds off that end if you can see that there and then we're going to join those two ends together and the reason we do that is because then that then creates a central groove so it just looks like one continuous piece rather than we've just sort of stuck two pieces together so we just apply the glue along that rounded edge Press the two pieces together. Just use the other end of the cocktail stick just to remove that glue. And then I'm just going to use a bit of masking tape to hold those two together whilst the glue dries. Squeeze them together and apply the tape and turn over as well. Like that, and that can be put to one side to dry. And do the other set as well. And then once they're dry, we'll start actually constructing the head and footboards. So once the glue has dried, we're going to attach the head and footboard mouldings. So remove the masking tape from both sides, and sometimes it tends to sort of fray or splinter the wood. So just use your finer grain sandpaper and just sand to remove any splinters. And you can do that on the back as well. And 
Okay, and then um, apply glue to the top and bottom of one of the pieces. And then lay it on your work surface and just press the moulding against the edge like that and on the bottom as well. And then I've just got some spare sort of strips of wood here. This is 6x3 but you can use anything um, that's sort of a little bit thicker than the wood you're using and just press it against the moulding and that will just help it sit in the right place. And just hold it until the glue begins to take. should only be a few seconds. And do that on the other side as well. And it's just easier than doing it with your fingers because you're covering the whole area. And again, this piece can then be put to one side to dry. And then attach the mouldings to the remaining board. from along the join there. And then again that piece can be left to dry and then we'll attach the long and short legs. So once the glue has dried on the headboard and footboard mouldings we're going to attach the legs. Um, first of all you just want to make sure that each side of the head and footboards are flush um, and the mouldings don't overhang. To do that you can just sand each edge very gently and just go in the one direction and do that on both sides and that will just make sure we're attaching the leg to a nice flat edge and we'll start by doing the footboard and you want to begin by making a pencil mark three millimeters or one eighth of an inch from the top of each short leg there and same with that one and then our footboard is going to sit or the top of the footboard is going to sit just below that pencil line so the top of the molding will sit just below the line so apply glue to each edge of the footboard
and then just press the leg up against the edge so that it's just below that pencil line, the top of the moulding. Then press them together while the glue begins to take. And then again just use another cocktail stick to remove the excess glue. Oops. And that can just be put to one side again to dry. And now we're going to attach the headboard to the legs and to the support. And again, we want to start by making pencil marks on the legs. And this time, 3mm and 58mm um, from the top edge. So 3mm and 58mm. And that's one eighth of an inch and about two and five sixteenths of an inch. Like so. And then apply glue to each side of the headboard. Just pop that there and then just to each end of this support. Like that. And then the headboard again needs to be just below that top 3mm pencil line. So the top moulding is just below. And then this support can sit just below that second pencil line. the remaining leg. Press that all together. Again, just remove that excess glue. And then that piece can also be put to one side to dry. And then we'll actually start to make up the bed frame. So once the glue has completely dried, I want to just rub out these um, pencil marks and then we're going to make further pencil marks um, at the bottom of each leg 16 millimeters from the bottom and on the front of the leg so that's 16 millimeters and that's about five eighths of an inch like that. And then you want to take um, the bed frame that we made earlier and just apply glue to each of these sort of notches at this supported end. You want the glue to be on both um, pieces. And then we're going to attach this to the headboard so that it sits just above those pencil lines we've just made. 
and the legs are just going inside the notches and it should be a nice tight fit because this supports the whole bed so press those down and then press the legs inwards and then just remove that excess glue And really we should leave this to dry um, for a while but I'm going to show you now how to attach the um, footboard. So we want to apply glue along this end mattress support under the camera. So all the way along that support. And then turn the, I'll just rub the pencil marks out on the footboard. Turn the footboard over like that. And then we want to attach this end support so it's along the bottom of the footboard and so that it sits centrally. So these Mat long mattress supports should be just about in the middle of each leg and just run your finger along there to make sure that it's completely flush and just press that into place and then we actually want to use some clamps to hold it into place while the glue dries Just carefully pick that up and then you can attach one at each end. Put one in the middle there and then another couple just to hold it completely square. And then that again can be left to dry. And next we'll attach um, the struts. We're now going to attach the slats along the frame. So we begin by applying glue along this top part of the frame. And then just down the edges slightly. And attach the first slat so that it's right up to the um, the long legs and they're just slightly shorter than this frame so just leave a sort of a millimeter at each end just so it's sitting on there centrally and just press that into place I'm going to turn the bed round and just apply glue along this bottom um, part of the bed. And then just slightly down these side supports. And you can glue another one along there. Again, so it sits centrally. And just press that down against that bottom support. And 
and then we want to apply one now across the middle. Now you don't have to measure, you can just do it by eye and just apply a tiny bit of glue to each end of the slat. And just stick that roughly in the centre. These aren't seen so it doesn't have to be exact. And then we're going to stick two here in this gap Oops, and two at the bottom. And again you don't need to measure, just sort of try and space them evenly. And then two in the final gap down here. And then just squeeze all those onto the supports. Straighten that one up a bit. again to dry. We're now going to finish off the bed by adding the um, tops to the posts. So you've got your little square here, 7 by 7 millimetres. So just take a small piece of uh, fine grade sandpaper and you're just go into round over each edge. So just very gently just sweep the sandpaper over the edge like that and you're just rounding it off, just makes it look a little bit neater and more finished. You can just sort of go along like that as well. Final edge. It's quite a fiddly little piece. Oh, I'm sanding my fingernail away there as well. There, like that. I don't know if you can see that clearly there. I've just gently rounded each edge, and then you just want to apply a tiny blob of glue to each of the posts. And you want to stick that face down, so the side you've just rounded needs to go down to the post. Just centrally, just do that by eye. And just press that into place. And then you can just remove any excess glue with the cocktail stick. So do that with each post and then the bed is ready to paint. So the bed has now been painted and I find that when I'm using white I need to do more coats. So this has had three coats, I did two full coats um, and sanded after each coat and then I just did a third coat on the visible area, so on the headboard and the footboard um, and on the legs. So we're now going to make um, our mattress and I've just cut a piece of card here that is just slightly smaller than the, the sort of bed area. So I've written here um, the measurements that I've used in millimetres and inches. So if you just cut your piece of card to that size and that just gives us a little bit of room 
um, for the fabric um, that we're going to be putting around the, the mattress base. So I'm using a 15 millimeter thick um, foam and this you can buy um, from eBay if you just search for uh, foam and you can buy it in rolls or sheets. I use quite a lot so I, I bought quite a big roll. Um, so to stick the card to the foam just apply glue to the card and I'm just again using the Gorilla wood glue and it just works perfectly for this. I'm going to use a spreader here. Spread that out. Make sure you sort of get it right up to the edges of the card. And then just um, push that onto your piece of foam and press it down. And then that can be weighed down um, and left to dry. So I'm just going to put that there and just pop a couple of books on top so that that dries nice and flat. Um, and sticks completely to the foam. And I've got here a piece that I did earlier um, and I was just going to cut uh, around the card. So use a nice big pair of scissors but don't try and do a whole cut at once, just do smaller cuts and then you'll find you get a straighter line. Go as close to the card as you can. thing we'll do is to um, make the bed in and that will be in part two of this tutorial. So I hope you've enjoyed making the bed so far. Please do subscribe to my channel because I'll be adding lots more tutorials soon and I'll see you in part two.